So in the last class, we heard about one of the most important symptom of fire. So we have been reading about how these panchabhutas, the five material elements, they evolved one after another, which are the energies of the Supreme Lord. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita also, Bhinna Prakriti Me Ashtadha. And how each of these different elements are associated with evolution of different aspects of these objects. Just like we saw, along with sky, the perception of hearing also evolved. Because sky, from sound, sky is produced. From sky, air is produced. And in air, there is both sound and touch. From air, fire is produced and fire is associated with form. So there is sound, there is touch and there is form. Now, Lord Kapila is describing further qualities of fire, not just the form. There are many other important aspects of fire. Fire element is the beginning of perception of form. But there are many more important aspects to fire. Just like we saw for air, there are different symptoms. Air is associated with touch. But there are many other important functions of air. Just like the circulation of air, if it is proper within our body, then our body is not diseased. We will be very healthy. So there is circulation of air inside, there is circulation of air outside. All these things are different functions of air. So similarly, here we find this material element, fire. What are the different functions? What are the different characteristics of fire? It is all explained in this verse. So what is it? If you see here, Dhyotanam, the first symptom of fire is distribution of light and heat. That is called illumination, dhyotanam. Then, this is external. It creates illumination. But we also understand fire is associated with heat. So, what are the other symptoms and functions of fire? If you see, pachanam, Pachanam means both cooking and digesting. With fire, one can cook the food and it is very surprising and which is not understood by modern science that actually it is because of the effect of fire we are able to digest our food. In Ayurveda, there are these different elements are associated with different things. Kapha, Pitta, Vayu, Agni. Correct. If the food is not digested properly, then there will be imbalances in Kapha, Pitta and Vayu. 
see how it is associated practically everything is dependent on agni how much digestive power you have got if you have got good digestive power which comes from the fiery element present inside it may not be the gross fire outside when we are cooking it is the gross fire but the same fiery element in subtle way is involved in stomach so in sanskrit in ayurveda there is a term called agni mandayam if the fire in the stomach somehow or other is reduced your digestive power is reduced so if digestive power is reduced whatever you eat depending upon which element is more influential in your body if your body is pitta body kapha body depending on that it will produce that kind of different wastages it is called mala so when that is produced either kapha will increase in your body pitta will increase and you will have acidity or why you will increase you will have lot of stomach problems you're not able to clear your stomach properly you will have gastric problem that is all because of imbalances of vayu and kapha we know different kinds of problems cold and running nose and different things similarly pitta acidity that also is cause of so many different kinds of diseases in the body so the root cause of all of them is how you are able to digest what you eat so there are two ways first is eat what you can digest and to increase your digestive power so your body has certain if it is functioning properly according to how your body is made you can digest certain things you may not be able to digest certain things it is said one's man food is another's man's poison so we have to see what we eat and what we can digest then we can remain healthy we eat something which we cannot digest then it will only give rise to different diseases in the body that is what we should see now what do they do in ayurveda they help to increase this fiery element how this fiery element is increased if bile secretion is more that is even according to science so they don't identify that bile secretion its effect is more fiery element which helps in digestion krishna says that in bhagavad gita the power of digestion is me you see the power the fire with which we digest our food that krishna says that is my energy that is me so how does ayurveda help they will give you certain medicine by which your bile secretion is balanced you can have good bile secretion and with bile secretion your fiery element will increase and with that you will be able to digest your food so that is called pachanam panam now how fire is associated with drinking water yes adanam how fire is associated with eating yes it is associated 
if fire element is good in your stomach then you will have good digestion and if you have good digestion you will feel thirsty if you feel good thirst and good hunger that means your digestion is good and if you don't feel very thirsty and if you don't feel hungry your digestion is not very good vice versa it is true then hima mardanam <clears throat> externally and internally both it helps in destroying the cold so it is well known prabhupad says the quality of fire to destroy cold is known to everyone severe cold can always be counteracted by fire <clears throat> so hima mardanam destroying cold tej saha tej saha means same of the fire vrittaya these are the functions then shoshanam evaporating shrut trud evacha hunger and thirst so if your fire element is good then you can quench your thirst nicely and you can satisfy your hunger nicely otherwise you will not feel hungry you will not feel thirsty so this is all very nicely described in ayurveda and here we see prabhupada is saying that what is described in ayurveda is uh, you know very nicely substantiated here in bhagavatam what we see in our practical life it is very clearly stated in shrimad bhagavatam so prabhupad defines this whole thing as he says this is energy study this is the study of energies of krishna because <clears throat> one may wonder why all these topics are discussed in shrimad bhagavatam actually you will also wonder if you see in bhagavad gita krishna defines knowledge means both understanding material world and understanding spiritual world seventh chapter is called knowledge of the absolute this is very interesting in this chapter krishna explains how one can understand him in truth tatvataha somebody who is not inclined to understand this energy of the lord is a sahajiya that is how they are described as sahajiya they are not inclined they are not interested in trying to understand how the different energies of krishna work no doubt in advanced stage one is not inclined about material world but first one has to go to that advanced stage when one has become mahabhagavata he does not see anything material he sees only krishna that also will try to understand when he sees water he is not seeing water he is seeing krishna because that is nothing but energy of krishna but in our neophyte stage it is very important aspect of knowledge so seventh chapter is called knowledge of the absolute and in that if you see right in the first verse krishna is saying श्री भगवान उवाच मैया सक्त मन पाथ योग युंज मदाश्रय 
अशंशय समग्रम माम यथा ज्ञास्यसी तत्शृणु हियर ओ सन ऑफ प्रथा अर्जुन हाउ बाय प्रैक्टिसिंग योगा इन फुल कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ मी कृष्णा इज गोइंग टू डिस्क्राइब द नॉलेज बाय विच वन कैन बिकम फुल्ली कृष्णा कॉन्शियस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो वट एवर कृष्णा इज गोइंग टू डिस्क्राइब इन दिस चैप्टर एक्चुअली हेल्प्स हिम to become fully krishna conscious because that is what krishna is saying what i am going to describe now he is saying by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me with the mind attached to me you can know me in full free from doubt so without asamshayam without any doubt we can know so prabhu pad explains this is the process of understanding krishna hearing from krishna or hearing from authorized sources shrunu and then what is going to happen slowly when we hear then all that is troublesome in our heart all that is anarthas in our heart that will be destroyed that we see in bhagavatam it is very nicely described nashta prayeshu bhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtaki right so what happens then when all uh, these things are gone tadarajastamo bhava kamalo bhadayashaye chete terana vidham sthitam satve prasidati correct and finally again krishna also describes the same thing what he is describing here is described in bhagavatam also vidhyante hridaya granthi chidyante sarva samshaya when all anarthas are gone when we have become free from the influence of rajoguna tamoguna and we have become situated in mode of goodness then vidhyante hridaya granthis that which is binding us to this material world is vanquished that chain of fruitive activities is terminated and chidyante sarva samshaya all doubts are gone this is the process if we hear properly then all doubts will be vanquished so then what does krishna describe this knowledge as krishna says ज्ञानम से हम स विज्ञान इदम वक्ष्या अशेषता यदा नेह भूय अन्याज आई शल नाउ डिक्लेयर एंड टू यू इन फुल दिस नॉलेज बोथ फिनोमिनल एंड नॉमिनल बाय नोइंग विच देर शेल रिमेन नथिंग फर्दर टू बी नो ज्ञानत्वम अवशिष्यते नथिंग इज लेफ्ट टू बी नो सो कृष्णा इज गोइंग टू डिस्क्राइब फुल नॉलेज अबाउट हिम विच इंक्लूड्स फिनोमिनल नॉलेज ऑल्सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सी आई जस्ट रीड इन द पर्पोट वट डज प्रभुपा से कंप्लीट नॉलेज इंक्लूड्स नॉलेज ऑफ द फिनोमिनल वर्ल्ड एंड द स्पिरिट बिहाइंड इट both krishna is the spirit behind this whole thing this is nothing but display of different energies of krishna that is called understanding knowledge in tatvatah 
सो नेक्स्ट कृष्ण से इज दैट मनुष्य नाम सहस्रेशु कश्चित यतति सिद्ध ये यतताम अपनी सिद्ध नाम कश्चित माम वेति तत्वतः करेक्ट सी हाउ इवन दो देर आर इम्पर्सनलिस्ट देर आर ऑल्सो स्टडिंग द एब्सोल्यूट ट्रूथ बट देर नॉलेज इज नॉट तत्वतः because they fail to understand this is all energies of krishna they all think this is illusion but krishna is describing no they are all my energies they produce illusion no doubt about it they produce illusion but they are not illusion those energies are true just like in bhagavatam krishna gives the example you move one fire stick now fire stick which you are moving that is not illusion but it creates a illusion of a circle of fire correct you can try that you move one fire stick round round so it will create an illusion of circle of fire but there is no circle of fire so that is illusion but the element which is creating illusion that is not illusion so the energy of the lord maya shakti this pancha bhuta everything this is not illusion this creates illusion for the living entity wherein they start thinking i belong to it that is illusion so this knowledge tatvatah has to be understood properly krishna his different energies how they are working who is controlling them when all these things are understood factually that is called tatvatah and krishna is saying that is very rare you see so out of thousands among men one may endeavor for perfection and of those who have achieved perfection hardly one knows main truth okay and then krishna starts describing what is that knowledge and he begins with this bhumi rapo nalavayu khama mana buddhi revacha ahankaram itiyam bhinna prakriti me ashtadha so krishna is saying earth water air fire see this is absolute knowledge this is being covered in this chapter called knowledge of the absolute then so we have to understand they are all separated energies of krishna then krishna is talking about his another energy besides this inferior nature oh mighty armed arjuna there is superior energy of mind which are all living entities who are struggling with material nature and are sustaining this universe jeeva bhutam mahabhaho yayedam dhariyate jagat so then krishna describes that energy then next krishna says of all that is material all that is spiritual in this world no for certain i am both its origin and dissolution so krishna has explained there is material there is spiritual living entities are spiritual they are also my energy anything matter this pancha bhuta bhumi rapo nala vayu all this is also my energy and i am the origin of them they are my energies so that also krishna has described and then krishna explains mattah parataram nanyat kinchit asti dhananjaya mai sarvam idam protam sutra mani gana iva there is no truth superior to me everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread so even though krishna is not seen right in this material world spiritual energy is seen we are able to see there are living entities we are able to see panchabhutas manifestation of panchabhuta what is there in this material world only these two things are there but we are not able to see hand of krishna 
So Krishna says, yes, you are not able to see. But everything is resting upon me. How it is resting? Just like the necklace, the pearl necklace. It is resting upon the thread. Thread is not seen. Pearls are seen. But they are resting upon the thread. You remove the thread, there is no more necklace. Everything falls apart. So, this also Krishna explains. And then Krishna starts explaining how to start perceiving Him in the material world. Practically how to start perceiving Him. So Krishna says, Rasoham apsukanteya I am the taste of water. So when we feel thirsty and when we drink water, we should immediately understand this is Krishna. Prabhasmi Sashi Suryoho. I am the illumination of sun and moon. Pranavaha Sarvavedeshu. I am that Omkara which is stated in all the Vedic literatures. So, I am the sound and the ability in the man. So, these are all different ways of understanding Krishna. So, this is how we have to see. Then Prabhupada explains, in advanced stage what happens? This is in the neophyte stage when we start understanding. This is how we have to see. This is, this taste is Krishna. This illumination of sun and moon, that is Krishna. Like that, Krishna describes so many things. Punya, Gandha, Prithivyascha. Anybody who is very, very uh, Balawan, somebody who is having strength, his strength is also me, Krishna says. So, in advanced stage, a Mahabhagavata, how does he see? So that is explained. Sthavara jangama dekhi na dekhe tara murati. He sees thavara, he sees jangama, moving, non-moving. Living entities are of two types. Sthavara and Jangama, that which stays in one place or which moves from place to place. Just like trees are there, they don't move from place to place. Other living entities like animals, human beings, we all move. So, when an advanced devotee sees, Nadeki Tara Murati, he does not see a tree. He does not see fire, he does not see water. Then what does he see? He sees Sarvatrahaya Nij Ishta Deva Spurati. He sees Krishna behind them. That this is nothing but energy of Krishna. And it is spontaneous. It is spontaneous. Prabhupada gives an example, just like the parents who love their children, even when they see a pant or shirt, any clothing of their children, they don't see clothing, they immediately see their child. They immediately remember their child, right? All the emotions, what they have for their child, immediately comes to their mind. When they see their child, the same emotions, when they see his pant or shirt, all those emotions come. Because they understand, this belongs to my child. So this is how a Mahabhagavata sees everything connected to Krishna. In that sense, he sees everywhere Krishna. So, that is how it is being described. So, all these different explanations in Bhagavatam, we should understand that they are part of understanding the 
absolute truth and that is how as we were seeing parikshit maharaj also when he was inquiring from shukadev goswami he began by asking shukadev goswami about please explain about how the supreme lord has entered in this material world through his different energies and shukadev goswami's those famous prayers which we read is the answers to that what is that first verse shri shuka vacha namah parasmai purushaya bhuyase saduddhava sthan nirodha leelaya see this is all the different pastimes of the lord how the supreme lord has entered into this material world how he creates this material world everything is mentioned in bhagavatam so step by step everything we should try to understand rantra shrimad bhagavatam ki jay jagat guru shri prabhupada ki jay